Welcome to the Carl Anthony Show, podcast number one. We're going to get straight into it. I'm going to get right into your mind. We're going to go deep down into your mind. Because I am going to ask you some tough questions. I am going to ask you to ask yourself some tough questions. So please don't take anything I say as evaluation of yourself. But please use my information that I've experienced from thousands, from thousands of sessions with clients. In a professional setting on a daily basis, I ask them the same questions and I get the same answers. So the first thing you need to do in this show is be brutally honest with yourself. Again, I'm not here to judge you. I'm not telling you how to live your life. I'm surely not telling you to be happy or not to be happy. All I'm asking you is, do you know what happiness is? True happiness. Because there's two sort of happinesses when you think about it. And the world that we live in, whether it's by mistake or design, is a world where we are programmed into looking for material happiness, temporary happiness. Like we all know, we all experience it. We get a new car, a new job, a new relationship, you know, or some sort of gadget or something that we've been seeking for for a long time. A new phone, a new iPad, a new computer, and so on. And for the first few days or even weeks or even a couple of a couple of months, we're happy. Every time we think about it, oh, I can't wait to go home and do this or play with that or do this. And it's temporarily at best. That is a material happiness. We all know when we get the new car, whether it's a second-hand car, we update our car, or whether we buy a brand new car, we know. But the first six months, we're going to be out washing it every weekend. But then that starts to slow down and... We end up not washing it at all and getting a wash the odd time. In fact, we sort of lose value in that shiny new car we had, or item, or computer, or laptop, or whatever. And that's material happiness. I'm asking you to ask yourself a different question. And it's based on emotional happiness. Because if you're emotionally happy, material things can seem a bit irrelevant except for what's necessary you need somewhere to live you need a job and certain things like that but if you have true emotional value well then material value doesn't really cut it it's a necessity it's nice I want to go on a holiday because I want to get some I want a new car because the last one I had isn't reliable I want to be in a new relationship because that last person didn't treat me right and so on and so on and so on and so on because when you truly understand emotional happiness, which equals emotional value, by the way, it's something you start to wonder about. It's something you start to think about. And you start to question things in your life. And it's a really good thing to do. It's like auditing your own mind. It's like doing an audit on yourself and going, okay, here's the good items and here's the bad items. Let's remove all this, let's remove all that, and where am I at? Now, you may wonder why I'm asking these questions. And... It's quite simple. I, on a daily basis, in a professional capacity, see clients for panic attacks. I see them for depression, fears, phobias, anxieties, addictions. Just a vast range of different issues that is created within our own mind from different experiences. But it doesn't matter what background they come from. Whether they are well-to-do and they have enough money and they don't have to work again. Or whether they're struggling to pay their bills, working two jobs or three jobs and so on. Whether they come from dysfunctional families or whether they come from, you know, affluent areas and affluent families, it's irrelevant. Because it always comes down to the same thing. I ask them a simple question. I say, hey, listen, close your eyes and just for a moment, imagine or pretend this is true. But imagine your car didn't exist. Imagine your house didn't exist, your family didn't exist, your job didn't exist. In fact, all the material items within your world and your experience didn't exist. And just you, just for a moment, ask yourself a question. Inside, with your eyes closed, are you happy? No one ever says yes. And in fact, maybe yes, that's a lie. Some do say yes, and I go, oh, really? And what part of your life is happy? And they go, oh, my children. I go, well, hang on a second. Just take them out of this, just for the moment. And again, ask yourself the question. Very few people say yes. Now, this is not a judgment. This is not me 
telling you you're not happy or your life is rubbish. I'm not telling you that. What I'm trying to ask you is to become aware of what happiness is. To become aware of what emotional happiness is. Because with emotional happiness, it equals value inside yourself. And when you have value inside yourself, all the stresses and challenges that you may have today disappear. Because with emotional happiness and emotional value, you become equal to everybody around you. You become as good as anybody around you. And we're not constantly looking to be recognized. We're not constantly going our way to people to go, oh, thank you. We have a confidence. We're not afraid of people. Because we see people as equals, not as, well, I know good and they're better than me. So emotional happiness is I, what I believe everybody should strive to achieve. Now, as we go into this, we will explain to you why people end up the way they do. But more importantly, how to resolve it. Because I had the experience like virtually everybody else out there. A good half of my life, I was miserable, unhappy. Now, don't get me wrong, I had different things I did and different distractions and a guitar and you know went out to see my friends and socialize and girlfriends and partners or whatever all that and it always gave me temporary happiness but it never gave me fulfillment and completion inside myself you know on a daily basis where I woke up feeling enough happy equal until I educated myself and researched and through thousands upon thousands of successful sessions with clients achieved the most important thing for me in my life, for my health, for my mind, and that was inner value, happiness. So I want you to ask yourself that question. Are you happy? Take away all the material distractions. Take away everybody you know, your family, your dog, your pets, your house, your car, your relationships, your money. Just take it out right now and ask yourself deep down, am I happy? Listen to the first response you get back. It's a feeling or it's just an inner voice inside your head. Because the first part of resolving any issue is understanding it. Because most people out there in different industries helping people, they all focus on the symptom. But we're very rarely the cause. And a good example of that is you go and see your doctor, your GP, and you might be feeling anxious or down, and you're given medication to deal with the symptom. You're given mood enhancers. Or you're given a tablet that helps you feel calm in situations where you may, may have felt anxious. Now, don't get me wrong, they help people, but for me it's just a temporary solution. But nobody really focuses on the cause of the issue. And for me, if you're not focusing on the cause, well then, you only have temporary solutions to the issue. And then some people self-medicate. So they might use alcohol just to distract them from themselves that they don't feel good enough, or drugs, or you know, addictions to TV or social media. And many, many forms of addiction. But it all comes down to the same thing. Distracting themselves from the fact that they're not enough. And as well as different experiences in life, maybe trauma at a young age, or just certain you know, emotional impacts and challenges they may have experienced. But through our perception, through this world we live in, whether designed or by mistake, people don't really have that emotional value. And I want to help you understand why. I want you to help you understand that it doesn't have to be this way. But in order to resolve it, you need to see a professional who is specialist in this area. So let's just take an assumption that you're not happy. Or, you know, you've lots of stuff going on around, your lovely children, nice husband, lovely car and all that. And well, that's great, and, and that's fine. And fair play. And then you might be in the opposite situation where you're not in a good relationship. Your car is falling apart. You're try struggling to pay your bills. It's irrelevant which world you live in. Now, I don't get me wrong, I know there's different challenges in both. But what I'm saying to you is, 
Let's just assume for a moment you're not happy. Why is that? Because of the lack of emotional recognition, attachment, bonding. And the world we live in, whether designed or mistake, is a world which is created that we are separated from our families. We're working 40, 50, 60 hours a week, stressed out. You know, a lot of the news that seems to come on TV is all quite negative and it's all doom and gloom. And even through Hollywood and TV and social media, it suggests that we have to compete with other people. That we constantly compare ourselves to other people. And if you even look at the, the youth today, the challenges they face. I mean, you look at some beautiful ladies going out there and they have, feel the need that they have to wear false lashes and false makeup and tan and, you know, this still allows. They've got to wear everything to help be recognised. And they've forgotten the power of natural beauty. Now, that's all a programme. That's all a construct. So what is true happiness and how do you get there? <clears throat> well, it's very, very easy. Surprisingly easy when you understand how. But it's like anything, you need to use the correct tools. It's like a carpenter. He has a toolbox full of different chisels for different situations. Or a mechanic. Different sized spanners for different sized nuts and so on. That's about understanding that to get true happiness we must let go of the hurts in our life. We must let go of all the negative, poisonous experiences that we've had, especially in the first six, seven years of our life, where we're in the world of what's called the blueprint stage. Because a child up to the age of six or seven takes in information at a vast rate, an accelerated learning. Remember, in those six, seven years, we got to learn how to walk, we got to learn how to talk, our habits are forming, our beliefs, our personality, what we're afraid of, what we're comfortable with, whether we feel good enough, whether we feel don't feel good enough, whether we feel anxious or depressed. It's all programmed in those early ages, and then it can be re-triggered later on in similar situations. But I've had thousands of people go from lack of emotional value to having value, to feel enough, to be equal. And it's life-changing. In order to get there, it's quite simple. We need to deal with the people who have hurt us most in our life. And again, the people who can have the most negative effect on us, and positive, are our parents. Because they bring us up in those really important years, the blueprint stage. So, when we look at how to do this, you really need to go to see somebody who's specialized in this area. who can help you enter that part of your mind, your long-term memory, where your emotions are and your feelings are, your habits and your beliefs, and, and even issues with anxiety or depression and fears. You need to enter that part of the mind. And when you enter that part of the mind, you have the ability, you have the opportunity to release hurts and angers towards certain individuals who have hurt you most in your life. And also, the opportunity to forgive. Because when you achieve those two things, when you genuinely let go of the anger and hurt towards somebody, when you genuinely forgive them, not because you're letting them off, not because you feel, well, I need to forgive them to feel better. No, no. You forgive them because you understand something. You forgive them because you understand that it's not personal. They know no different. And it was never about you. The things that happened to you wasn't because of you, it was because of the person who did it to you. So, to get through freedom from the past, to move on and let it all go, to get your value back, to feel good enough again, to feel equal again, you must deal with the past. So clients come to see me on a daily basis and one of the most popular, if you like, or one of the busiest things we do is releasing the past, getting unconditional forgiveness because then we have closure in the mind. The mind is then free to move on. Happiness. True happiness. Comes from within. 
and not from the outside.